Bears, and now Rodgers sits down. And he's coming out of the game. Concerned with his Achilles. Uh, MRI is probably going to confirm what we think is already going to happen. The reaction from a bar where people are realizing the bar tabs, they've been racking up all night, thinking, certainly with Rodgers hurt, the bar was going to be paying that tab. It is setting in. They are going to have to go to the bar and pay that tab. Last night was a nightmare for New York Jets fans, although it was very bittersweet because the Jets are currently undefeated and they beat a division rival that many people didn't think they could be given the circumstances. But now the aftermath is here and we know what the New York Jets plan is moving forward. So before we get to the content, this is our sixth piece of content between all my channels, TikTok account, Snapchat account. I think I've earned your subscription and the notification bell being turned on if you haven't turned it on. This is the third full length video we have on this channel in the past 24 hours as well. We're on the grind to 800,000 subscribers. Now that we got all that out of the way, break. You know what brings a huge smile to my face? Bam! Bam, bam, you guys are making bank on prize picks. I absolutely love it. Week one was a huge success for a lot of you guys. And we're gonna keep it going, man. Each and every day, I post my picks for free on my Instagram story, at the flight mic. And we're gonna feature the best slips on this channel each and every week. So submit them to me via Instagram DMs if you want to be featured. And if you haven't started playing prize picks, you use my promo code microphone and they'll match your initial deposit when you sign up on prize picks. And thank you prize picks for the sponsor. Mic check. One, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? I know what you guys are going to ask me. No, I'm not wearing dark green to celebrate the New York Jets' downfall. This was just a coincidence. The New York Jets went into this season with tremendous expectations. I mean, I've said it frequently on this YouTube channel. This team was complete in every single aspect, except in two, at least last year. The first one was quarterback play, and the second one was offensive line play, which is very shocking because coming into this season, we had high hopes for for the New York Jets offensive line. They got Mekhi Becton back and he looked to be healthy for the very first time in a very long time. They also brought in Dwayne Brown and they already had Connor McGovern on the team. Not to be confused with the Dallas Cowboys' Connor McGovern, who also happens to play offensive line. But with that being said, there were very high hopes for this team once they traded for Aaron Rodgers. And the plan was remarkable. Aaron Rodgers already had a really good relationship with Zach Wilson and the plan was very simple. I mean, I'll let Aaron Rodgers describe to you the plan himself. Like like to be able to play a few good years here and then hand it right back off to Zach and right. let him go for the next 15 and it'd be a really special uh, you know 18 to 20 year run of uh, <laughs> great quarterback play. But unfortunately, the plan came to a screeching halt on Monday Night Football. And on the fourth snap of Aaron Rodgers' New York Jets career, Aaron Rodgers tore his Achilles tendon. And it seemed like almost immediately, we all knew that it was a torn Achilles. Last night, Robert Sala said this. All right, I'll uh, deal with the quarterback real quick. Um, uh, concerned with his Achilles. Uh, MRI is probably going to confirm what we think is already going to happen. So prayers tonight, but it's not good. And it resulted in the New York Jets coaches just having a very difficult time understanding that this happened. I mean, there's a report from Diana Russini and Peter Schrager saying in the aftermath of Aaron Rodgers' injury, Jets coaches haven't been able to sleep. One coach said, was that all a dream? It's 7.05 in the morning and I've been texting with three different Jets coaches for the last several hours. They haven't slept. There are like so many Jets fans this morning. They're devastated over Rodgers and they're devastated for Rodgers. And I honestly feel that way too, man, because this is a guy that was on the cusp of retirement and it seemed like the moment he got traded to the New York Jets, he had a brand new lease on life. Took a huge pay cut so the New York Jets could be as competitive as they possibly could be and was chasing a Super Bowl in his age 39 season. Bear in mind, Rodgers only wanted to play for one or two more seasons before handing it off to Zach Wilson once again. And it seems like that is probably going to happen a a lot sooner because according to Adam Schefter, we already found out what my brother predicted last night, who's a podiatrist. An MRI confirmed today that Aaron Rodgers officially tore his Achilles on the fourth play of his New York Jets career. Rodgers season now officially is over. There are already questions about whether his Hall of Fame career is as well. So that's a brand new element we need to get to because a lot of people are joking about this situation. They're saying like this is going to be Aaron Rodgers' ankle after he treats it with D 
DMT and Joe Rogan supplements. But on a more serious note, Aaron Rodgers was already torn about whether he wanted to continue to play football. He mentioned it multiple times. He had a whole darkness retreat in regards to whether or not he wanted to still play football. Him and Randall Cobb thought that they were done following their Green Bay Packers tenure. So the New York Jets gave him a new lease on life. He had the opportunity to also mentor Zach Wilson, who he already had a great relationship with while chasing a Super Bowl. And now that his Achilles is torn, it seems like the New York Jets once again are in the same exact position again. And this isn't great news for Green Bay Packers fans either because it's official that 2024 draft pick that was conditional is officially going to be a second round pick as opposed to a first round pick, which it would have been a first round pick if Rodgers played in 70% of his snaps this year. All the players of the New York Jets are really upset about the situation. Some people are blaming the New York Jets offensive line, whereas others are blaming the turf on MetLife Stadium. Randall Cobb suggested that the NFL cares more about money than the safety of their players and he was asked about the turf at MetLife Stadium. We wanted the NFL to protect the players with grass fields, but the NFL is more worried about making money, profit over people. It's always been the case. I've never been a fan of turf and that's my stance. Brees Hall also expressed his desire to move away from turf. Grass, that's my answer. We want grass. It makes a lot of sense considering the fact that this is the second time the New York Jets lost a crucial player to a season ending injury that involved the leg. In the case of Aaron Rodgers, it was the ankle, the Achilles. In the case of Brees Hall, it was his ACL. And these are life altering injuries, by the way. I mean, luckily for us, Brees Hall came back the same player more or less and had a dominant debut. Aaron Rodgers is going to be 40 next year. So who knows if he even commits to playing after a demoralizing injury like an Achilles tear. It takes a lot of time to come back from an Achilles tear. All you know, he's not good to go in week one of next year. And by the time he comes back, he could be rusty. So what are the New York Jets planning to do? Well, it's obvious that Aaron Rodgers is going to settle into a mentorship type role for Zach Wilson. And based upon what we saw last year and what we saw from last night, it might be more of the same. Only Zach Wilson has this guy in his corner. Well, there's a lot of guys that have really made me feel comfortable here and made me feel at home. I think as much as anybody, the relationship with, with, uh, with Zach has been the most important one because uh, him and I already had a friendship and coming in here and knowing that I'm coming in to be the guy where he's been the guy and he's dealt with so much uh, scrutiny in the media and ups and downs this first couple of years. For him to embrace me the way he has, has been fantastic. I love him, you know, I really care about him and I want to see him uh, to grow and get better and to watch me and to be in my hip pocket and learn as much as possible. But that relationship was first and foremost, I think most important. So on Monday Night Football, we saw Garrett Wilson encouraging Zach Wilson in the middle of the game, which is nice considering the fact that Garrett Wilson quite literally called out Zach Wilson last year when he played horribly against the Patriots. Sorry. you out here looking sorry, man. And uh, we know that we're not sorry. So that's, that's why it really, really hurts, you know? We know that we're better than that. That's why it hurts. And then doubled down on it later on and said that the whole team was happy he did it. I definitely feel like it did. You know, I didn't mean any any harm to anyone, you know, by saying it. And um, I don't think anyone took it that way, luckily, you know. So, so um, you know, honestly, I feel like people was happy I said it. Zach Wilson definitely had a very difficult season last year, and it was a very eye-opening one for all of us. I mean, there's no way you could give a quarterback that said this. The, as an offense, though, I mean, when you guys are only able to score three points, the defense only lets up three points. I mean, do you, do you feel like you let the defense down at all? No. No. And have him start for the rest of the season, right? There's no way they're going to do that, right? Well, here's what the New York Jets plan is for replacing Aaron Rodgers. I know what a lot of you guys want because it's also what I want. Yes, I know we all want Tom Brady to come out of retirement, put on a Jets uniform, and play for the New England Patriots division rival. I would pay good money to see the look on Bill Belichick's face if that were to ever happen. The odds of this happening are zero to none. Same with Andrew Luck. There's no way Andrew Luck is going to come out of retirement to play for the New York Jets, which is also funny because Jim Irsay, in the most Irsay fashion, actually wished Andrew Luck a happy birthday, saying happy birthday to an all-time great Andrew Luck. Andrew broke slash set numerous records, but leading the charge went down 38 to 10 versus Kansas City, ranks with the greatest comebacks ever. I don't know if it was intentional. This definitely fueled the fire a little bit, especially considering the Jets need a quarterback and every single time a team needs a quarterback, people automatically say, oh, bring back Andrew Luck. But Andrew Luck retired because he started to hate the game of football after 
taking many hits as a quarterback. Tom Brady did everything in his power to avoid getting hit when he was playing quarterback for the Buccaneers. And that makes a lot of sense considering that he was 45. So I highly doubt either of these individuals would want to come out of retirement to play for an organization who lost their future Hall of Fame quarterback because they weren't able to protect him or because of the turf, whichever you want to blame. So at this point, what is the New York Jets plan? Well, here's a list of free agent quarterbacks that are available that they're reaching out to. There's Carson Wentz, Cam Newton, Colin Kaepernick, and Matt Ryan. Nick Foles is probably my favorite here. I think Nick Foles is probably the most likely to get signed by the New York Jets because they're not looking for a quarterback to start for the remainder of the season. They're looking for another individual to add to the QB room to make sure Zach Wilson is in the best position to compete and also just so they could have depth in the event that Zach Wilson gets injured. And there are some funny names here like Colin Kaepernick's camp actually reached out to the Jets, but no one's going to entertain Colin Kaepernick. He's in his mid-30s at this point. Yeah, that brother's starving. Yes, sir, brother. There's a chance that the New York Jets make a trade for Case Keenum because Houston already has CJ Stroud and Davis Mills on the roster and Case Keenum is a veteran QB, is familiar with the New York Jets offensive scheme, and it wouldn't take that much to acquire him via a trade. I would say that the New York Jets might want to trade for Matthew Stafford, but at this point, the LA Rams are 1-0, so I don't think they're going to want to punt on the season so quickly. They did explore trading Matthew Stafford in the offseason, so I don't know if that's still going to be there now that the regular season is on the way. But at the end of the day, we know one thing and one thing's for sure. The man that is going to be carrying the New York Jets for the foreseeable future for the rest of the season is none other than Zach Wilson. Robert Sala said it himself. With Aaron Rodgers out for the year, New York's hopes now rely on their brand new QB1. And Ian Rappaport confirms this. It is Zach Wilson's team. So yeah, this is definitely not what the New York Jets wanted because Zach Wilson performed so horribly last year that they figured, okay, let's get a Hall of Fame caliber QB. Maybe if Zach Wilson watches the way Aaron Rodgers prepares and with Aaron Rodgers' mentorship, Zach Wilson could be a solid quarterback in the NFL. I mean, it worked for Jordan Love, but Jordan Love got to watch Aaron Rodgers prepare for three straight seasons. So this is definitely not what they wanted because yeah, maybe in a year or two, Zach Wilson, after watching Aaron Rodgers' preparation and picking his brain a little bit, maybe Zach Wilson could have been the guy. But I think this is the worst thing that could have happened for Zach Wilson. I mean, look at the game that he played last night. Yeah, it was enough to win, don't get me wrong, but even his lone touchdown pass to Garrett Wilson was quite literally a bullet pass to the cornerback that Garrett Wilson had to kind of intercept and tip to himself. That was supposed to be a back shoulder throw. That looked nothing like a back shoulder throw. And I don't want to pile on Zach Wilson because I really want him to succeed. He has that dog in him, come on. But you could tell that the same problems exist. Maybe with Nathaniel Hackett as his offensive coordinator and a much better rushing attack, Zach Wilson could be better than he was last year because he has Brees Hall and Dalvin Cook this year and Nathaniel Hackett historically has employed very strong run heavy offenses. Maybe a huge reason why Zach Wilson didn't succeed was because Mike LaFleur's system was too complicated for him. But at least in his debut, it really didn't look like he was different at all whatsoever. Now, again, this was a throw to Tredavious White that Garrett Wilson intercepted. And this is a game without any preparation at all whatsoever. Maybe he's a little bit more confident. Maybe his teammates are more behind him. We'll have to wait and see. But we know the plan for sure so far, barring something unforeseen, is Zach Wilson is QB number one in New York. We'll keep you guys updated in regards to Aaron Rodgers' plans. I mean, tomorrow is Tuesday. He usually appears on the Pat McAfee show on Tuesdays. Personally, I think there's a good chance that Aaron Rodgers retires, mainly because if you tore your Achilles, it's about a one-year timetable to come back from an Achilles tear. By the time Aaron Rodgers is ready, it'll probably be this time next year. And he wouldn't get training camp with his new teammates. And if there's anyone that can make up the deficit, it's Aaron Rodgers. But that's a lot to overcome just to play maybe one more season of football. So let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. Is it over for Aaron Rodgers? Do you like the New York Jets plan now that Aaron Rodgers is out for the season? I'd like to hear what you have to say. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.